First, we're going to locate some of the clips on the scooter. There's one here on the left arm, right in the middle between the motor and the actual suspension. Loosen that first, then undo the screw located here. and loosen this screw next. You don't need to go as far as I did. I just did it because it was easier for me. Now we're gonna bend back that top clip so that we can get the motor cable out and free. Next, we're going to loosen off the nuts on the sides. There's usually some really strong red glue in there, so make sure your spanner fits well and don't be afraid to crank down fairly hard. It's lefty loosey, righty tighty. My little trick here is to make sure that the little locking washers aren't completely out of the swing arm so that I can move my box closer so that when the motor decides it wants to drop out, I can catch it more easily and work with it straight away. As you can see here, I stopped just before that locking nut frees the motor. Drag the box over, loosen off that nut, and then drop it on the box, being very careful not to catch that motor wire on anything. Next is we have to remove the disc brake. I loosen off all the screws first and then take them all out. Take the disc brake off. And now we need to let the air out of the tire. If you don't do this step, you're gonna pinch the tube on the way out as you remove the rim. And you really don't want that if you want to reuse your tubes. Now we're going to remove the rim side plate. These are the screws around the outermost part of the motor. Undo them all uniformly if you can. It will save you from pinching a tube. Now we're going to evenly take this plate off. If you don't take it off evenly, it will get caught on the sides of the motor and be jammed. I suggest doing this with the motor facing up towards you so there's no weight on the motor itself. It'll make your life a lot easier. Slide the tire and tube off in one clean go. Push on the valve if you're finding it hard to get it out. Grab your new tire and tube. Pump up your tube just a little bit. Otherwise, when you go to fit it, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do. We're not going to put too much air in it. We only just want it to fill the tube nicely so that when we put it on, we can make sure the tube isn't going to pinch on the rim when we squish it back down. Check the tire orientation. Most tires only go one way. There's a rotation arrow on the side there that I point to, and then I rotate the tire so that I mentally know which direction it's meant to go. Find the valve stem hole in the rim and then push the valve through it. I struggle with it a little bit here. Don't be surprised if you do too. Try and push and pull on it from both sides. It's much easier if you're seeing what you're doing from the other side of the motor. Turn the motor back around and make sure that the rubber tube is seated correctly inside of the rim. You want to make sure that none of this rubber is going to pinch when you put these two halves back together. Put in the first screw and I'm only going to put it in by a couple of turns.
then I'm going to go as far across the motor as I can. I think it's one spacing between each screw that I use. And then I do the same thing. I only put a couple of threads down so that way I can make sure that the rim side plate is going to go down as evenly as possible, preventing us from pinching a tube while doing this installation. The last thing you want to do is screw down one screw as far as you can, get the side plate stuck and pinch a tube. You'd have to start all over again after ordering new tubes from AliExpress or Bike Scooter City. You don't want to tighten any of these down completely yet. You just want to get them up snug evenly so that we can get them torqued down properly at the end. Uh, I also forgot to mention, if you have any blue Loctite or thread locker, don't be afraid to use it here because it's worth it. I didn't have any on hand and there was still some left on the bolts that I took out anyway. So it was fine. Next goes back on the disc brake sorry, the rotor, and we're going to do the same start pattern again, and I'll try and clip this a bit so that we can save some of your time. Again, I'm not doing any of these up completely tight. I'm doing them up until there's only a little bit left to go so that I can move the rotor around and make sure all the bolts fit in nicely. If you do one down all the way, you'll find that you'll need to let it loose again just so that you can actually rotate the rotor a bit to get some of the other bolts in. It's always best to tighten these down with even pressure. Now we torque down the rotor, going in the same star pattern again, making sure the rotor was actually going in the same direction it was when we took it off. Man, these X10s have some really nice rotors on them, for standard ones, of course. We're going to use an Allen key to push against the valve stem so that I can actually get the pump back on it. Otherwise, it would just shoot back, on, back inside the wheel. And then I'm going to really hate pumping this thing up on top of that box. I was sweating here. Time to fit the motor back in the fork. We're going to make sure that the two flat washers on the left side of the motor are towards the inside of the shock. And on the right side of the motor, the single washer is on the inside as well. Only the curved washers should be on the outside, the ones with the locking, locking piece on the top of them. Push the motor into the back of the swing arm as far as you can. Use your hands to tighten down the nuts so that it holds back in place and then hold the motor in the swing arm as deep as you can and tighten it down. Make sure to use some Loctite on these nuts as well. You don't want these coming loose while you're riding. There's a lot of torque being translated through them. Make sure the rotor clears your caliper by spinning your wheel. If it doesn't, adjust your brakes. Now we're going to feed the motor cable back through. I push this in with a screwdriver because it's easier than using my fingers. You don't need to clamp it down too tight, just enough to get it in there and that it's not going to collide with the motor at all. Next is this annoying spring cable here. Make sure the spring is further up the motor cable than I currently have it. Otherwise, it's not going to do its job and protect the motor cable from flexing. Push the bottom end in first. Push around that little clip. It can be a bit fidgety to get it back in there, but don't be afraid, you'll get there in the end. 
Do be careful though, these bits are sharp. And then push the top clip back across, grab the screw and put it back in there. Put the end caps back on the sides of the wheel and done. You've now changed your tires. If you like the video, hit that button. If you like the content you're seeing here and you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button too. I make videos about scooters all the time. I'm trying to keep my video uploads more regular. I'm trying to go at least once a week. And if you're looking to buy a Dragon scooter and you want to get a discount, have a look in the codes in the description below. It helps my channel a lot. So thank you guys very much. See us next time.